Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial and today we are painting Skull Taker. Yes, he's quite the miniature. He's an absolutely badass demon. Very bloodlettery and very cool. And so, well, without further ado, we're going to get jump in and start painting him. He's been primed in Wraithbone and the first colour we're going to be using is Blood Angels Red. I'm going to be using this all over all of his skin. So we're just going to pick a place to start and I'm going to start just here on the leg. I'm just going to start painting this Blood Angels Red all over just like this. So with that Blood Angels Red all applied across the skin, what we're now going to do is going to add a little bit of extra shading in there. The colour we're going to be using for this is Dark Earth Flesh. And what we want to do is just take some Dark Earth Flesh on our brush, basically anywhere where there's like a kind of shaded area, for example, under here, underneath the armpit. We're just going to add this Dark Earth Flesh over the top, like that. I'm going to do the same thing here in amongst these pimples on the chest, like that. So I'm going to be kind of for this muscle here, we're just going to add a little bit of this darko flesh in here. This is just going to add a little bit of variation to the skin. Muscles are not being too dark. Just adding a little bit to those pimples there and there. Got some here. Add some around the neck. We're also going to add some around the face as well. Just like this. And then we've got some that we're going to add just going up here on the back of his head as well. Just like that. So just go around and add this dark earth flesh where you like. Got the entire of this leg here, for example. Got those pimples. Like that. A little too much darko flesh on the brush. Some on the arm. And on this arm. Add a little bit to the hand. And I'll add some to this kind of thigh here as well. Some to the spines too. Just a little bit more of extra depth in there. Like so. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some basilicanum grey. We're going to use this to paint in all of the black details. Well, the majority of them. We're going to use this on areas such as the horns. Like this. Don't worry, we've got a little bit of red there. This is just acting like our pre shade for when the black goes on, which will make it nice and dark. So, we're going to do it all over the areas like the horns, the toes, like the talons down here, any spines and things. And what we're also going to do, we're going to do this over the top of the cloaks and the armor and the leather as well. So with that Basilicanum Grey applied to all of our areas that are going to be black, well, most of them, 
what we are going to do now is we're going to take some black templar i'm going to paint that over the top now we are also going to include areas like the soft grip on the sword because we didn't do that basilicanum gray because we don't need to because it's so small and tiny the black templar will do all the work for us so what we're going to do is we're going to grab that black templar we're just going to start painting that over the top of where we've added that basilicanum gray Start here on the horn and start working my way around. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Agaros dunes. I'm going to use this to paint in the icon on the cloak, it's a big cornate one, just here. So with that, what we're then gonna do is gonna create a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part basilicon gray mix. We're gonna paint this over the top of our corn icon. We just want this to have a slightly faded grayish tone to it. So with that done, it's still wet at the moment, but that doesn't matter because we're moving on to paint all the skulls. And the color we're gonna be using for this is Skeleton Horde. And now well, basically what we wanna do is we just wanna start whacking this Skeleton Horde all over, just like this. Now don't worry about the little halos and crowns and various bits of jewelry, things like that on some of the skulls. So we're going to be a metallic colour, so it doesn't matter that we get this on there. What we do want to do is just make sure that we work this skeleton horde into all of those eye sockets and get it all over all of the skulls. All except the one that he's holding in his hand, because we're going to deal with that all a little bit later. So with all of that skeleton horde applied, as you can see, what we're now going to do is going to take some shyish purple. I'm going to use this to paint in his tongue. So with that done, what we're now going to do is going to work on the sword blade. Now the colour we're going to be using first is Griffhound Orange. And what we want to do is basically just take this Griffhound Orange on our brush and we just want to paint this in a nice smooth coat all the way up the blade. So starting down here and then we're just going to, in a nice big broad brush stroke, pick up most of that blade and then do the same thing on the other side. Just like that. Similarly again, we do it on this side too. Start down there, big broad brush stroke. And just pick up any bits that we've missed on the sides, like that. So with that done, what we now want to do is we want to create a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part black Templar mix. We want to paint this all over the sword and then we're going to blend it out a little bit and then we're going to do something afterwards to make sure it's nice and dark. 
So what we do is we take this Black Templar mix. We don't want loads on our brush at once. What we do is we start here at the bottom, just like before, and we paint this all over the sword. Like that. We we'll do the same thing. Just mop up that little bit of excess just there that we don't want. We we'll do the same thing on the other side as well. Start down there and all the way up. Like that. Then what we do is we wash the brush and just towards the tip, we just want to lift off some of that. Black Templar like that with a clean brush. Just down to around about there, like that. So it just becomes that a little bit cleaner. Similarly again on the other side, we're just gonna lift off some of that Black Templar like that. So it fades up, basically. So with that done, we then use the exact same mix again, two parts contrast medium to one part Black Templar, and we basically do it again, only we kind of take off a little bit more. So now that it's dry, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see that this area down here gets a lot darker. I'm gonna go up to round about there, like that. And we're gonna wash that brush. And then we're just gonna feather out the transition just that little bit, just to make that so it doesn't have like a hard line where it stops. You should see now that it fades up into the pound orange. So similarly again on the back. Coming up to around about there. Wash brush and then feather it out. Like so. So with that done, just whilst it dries, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on and we're gonna use some thinned down lead belcher. I'm gonna use this to paint in the silver details. And this is gonna include areas like the male down here. Like so. Just want to make sure we get in and around it, those icons. Like this. We also want to make sure that we do the back. Just under here. Like that. There we go. Perfect. And then what we're going to do is on the back, we're just going to hunt for some of those extra details. So. We've got a little band here that we're going to paint with the lead belcher. So with that lead belcher applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thinned down brass scorpion. I'm going to use this to paint in the remaining metallic details. This is going to be areas like his chest plate here, like that. Areas like the corn icons down here on his tabard. Like that. We've got his pauldron around here that we're going to do it with. And we've got the details on the sword. 
like that. And what we're also gonna do, just gonna hunt around in the skulls for areas like this little Well, I guess it's the corn icon. So with that brass scorpion applied to all of our, well, gold brass areas, what we're now gonna do is gonna work on this burning skull here. Now we're gonna be using three colors. We're gonna be using the Yandan yellow, Blood Angels red, and Black Templar. We're gonna be using this all at the same time. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna take some Blood Angels red, and we are just gonna paint this all over the dripping blood down here. Just like this. Because it is a skull that is both dripping with blood and on fire. Does it get more cornate than that? <laughs> oh, it's very cool. So, with that Blood Angels Red applied, oh, just missed a little bit just there. With that Blood Angels Red applied, what we then do is we take some Yand and Yellow. And we're now going to, from the skull upwards, paint this Yand and Yellow all over. Now, it doesn't matter if you do grab a little bit of that Blood Angels Red from below. If anything, it just helps with the effect that we're going for. Getting this yand and yellow all over. Like so. And do the same thing on the other side. Then what we do, we wash the brush one more time, grab some Blood Angels Red. And now what we want to do is we want to, from the top down, apply this Blood Angels Red over the top of our yand and yellow, add a little bit around the skull face as well. Wash the brush and grab some black templar. I want to apply this to the tops of the flames, so I'm going to apply some down here, here, apply some under there, like that. Wash the brush, grab a little bit more black templar. And just do the same thing on the other side as well. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Black Templar. We're going to apply this onto that skull in his hand just to make it look black from the fire and what we want to do basically is on the top of it on this side and on this side so you want to paint this black templar over the top of the kind of flat open areas like that Same on the back. Just like that.
So with that done, it's now time to apply some shades to the model. And the first one we're going to use is Basilicanum Grey. I'm going to be using this on all the silver. Just like this. And with that done, we're then going to use some Dark Oath Flesh to shade all of our Brass Scorpion. So with that shade applied, Skull Taker is now at what I would call a War Hipster battle ready. He's already looking pretty awesome, but what we are going to do is going to take him one step further. We're going to add some highlights. So the first highlight we're going to be using is some thinned down Wild Rider Red. We're going to be using this for all of his flesh. Now, essentially what we want to do here is just want to start picking out the edges. all the way around his face, around his muscles, everywhere. And with that Wild Rider Red applied, what we're then going to do is going to take some thinned down Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm going to use this as our spot highlight on all of his flesh. So what we want to do is you just want to pick out the sharpest points. Like this. So areas like the little corners. cheekbones these spikes or horns I should say Just like this. We can also do, let's just start picking out little pimples and things. You don't have to pick out all of them. Just enough to create a noticeable variation. So with that done, all of his skin is now finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on. And the first color we're gonna be using is Dawnstone, and the place we're gonna be highlighting is all of the black. So what we're gonna do is just gonna take a small amount of this on our brush, and we're just gonna start picking out all of the edges. in all of our black details.
like this. In addition, what we're going to do is up on the sword blade, is we're going to highlight towards the darkest areas. So for example, down here, we're going to highlight it with the Dawnstone. But what we're not going to do is the top part. So we want to go and go up to where this highlight finishes. Which is round about there. And that's as far up as we want to go with the Dawnstone highlights. The rest of it, we're going to do with a slightly different colour. And with that Dawnstone applied to all of our black details, what we're now going to do we're going to take some thin down administratum grey we're going to use this as our little spot highlight so what we want to do is we just want to for example here on the edge of these horns at the very tips here just want to add a little bit of this administratum grey at the sharpest points like that, just to give it that little bit of extra shine, make them look nice and sharp. So with that done, our black is now all finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Fire Dragon Bright. We're gonna use this to finish off the sword blade. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna highlight very carefully now around the tip of the blade. Coming down to where we've done our gray highlights. Just like this. And so with that done, what we then do is we once again take some Griff Hand Orange, not very much at all. We just want to paint this over the top of the tip of the blade. Coming down over the grey, just a little bit. Just to make it nice and warm. Like so. So with that done, the sword is now finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some blood for the blood god. I'm gonna use this on the dripping blood here from the skull. Just like that. But what we're also going to do in the sea of skulls down here, we're going to paint this in between each one. Now I know the box art has this as like a lava type thing, but I want it to be like skulls bubbling up in my floating in in a pool of blood <laughs> so with that done what we're now going to do is we're going to take some iron rack skin and we're going to use this to highlight the cornate icon on the cloak.
And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thin down Rune Lord Brass. We're going to use this to highlight all of our brass scorpion areas. And so with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down Canoptic Alloy and we're going to use this to add a little spot highlight and to give it just a little bit of a shine on the sharpest point. So for example, here on that chest plate, just want to pick out those areas and the bridge of the skull nose and the teeth. And you've got the tip of it various spikes and things as well. You just want to go around like this. For example, down here we've got those rivets. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take some Screaming Skull. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the Screaming Skulls. Well, none of them are screaming. They've all got their... Well, no, I don't think any of them have got their bottom jaws. So maybe in a way they are all permanently screaming. And so with those skulls all highlighted, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some Gorse Blaster Green. We're gonna use this to paint in his eyes. Like so. And so the last highlight we're going to apply is some Slanash Grey. Let me do this to the tongue. So with that done, I'm just going to finish off the base. Now, I'm going to be doing this to match the rest of my blood letters. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some wildwood. And I'm going to use this to paint in all of the soil around the outside of the base. And then with that wildwood applied, what we then do is we take some Basilicanum Grey. And we're going to paint this all over the rest of the rocks. But we're also going to paint this over the top of where we've added that wildwood. So basically everywhere that isn't the bloodied skulls. So with that done, all that's left to do is to dry brush that base with some Tyrant Skull. You just want to get this all over, just catching all of our brown, all of our rock, 
just like that. And there we have it, Skull Taker is now finished and he looks absolutely cracking. It's so nice to paint a model with so much character in amongst all of the, well, blood letters that look very similar to him, but he definitely stands out on the field when you have him in amongst the red tide of anger, war and rage. It's a lot of fun and it was a really, really fun character to do, it took very little time and that's always nice to get a kind of a centerpiece model done very quickly if you enjoyed this video you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you you can do so head to patreon.com forward slash war hipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash war hipster alternatively you can now become a youtube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here just like these absolute bosses have done and if you just want to shoot me a little thanks just because you really love this video you can click on the thanks button just below this video don't forget to share it like it comment on it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to make sure you stay up to date don't forget to click the bell icon thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all very soon in the next one happy wargaming <laughs>